Hey, welcome back to the garage. On today's episode, we're going to be working on the uh, 63 Volkswagen again. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, floor pans on it. Uh, I'm not going to be doing a traditional floor pan. Uh, this would be um, what you would get for a traditional replacement. Um, it's basically trade, uh, so it has a little lower area for a rear, uh, basically on this one for a battery, and then also maybe some foot room uh, for rear passengers. Um, but since we're going to be lowering the uh, bug quite a bit, um, every inch of ground clearance is uh, crucial. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is uh, flat floor pans. Uh, these are uh, dimpled and punch um, from Fresh Customs. I'll have their link down below of where you could get these. Um, but like I said, they're dimpled stamped, so they resemble something like the originals. And since they're uh, dimpled and everything, they're not going to flex on you. Um, they're not going to tin can on you, so this way they'll be nice and flat instead of just, I mean, um, they'll stay uh, nice and solid instead of just putting a flat piece of uh, sheet metal in there. Uh, the other thing is we're gaining about an uh, inch and a half at the lowest area and about two inches at the highest area of additional gr ground clearance. So if any of you guys have built, um, you know, really low bugs, uh, aka pan scrapers, um, you know every inch actually counts. So this is actually going to help us quite a bit. Uh, these are uh, very thick uh, panels. I, I would say they're actually thicker than a lot of the uh, reproduction panels you could get on the market. Uh, Fresh Customs does do a real good quality job on any products that they build. Um, and to my knowledge, they're the only ones who offer these uh, flat floor pans uh, right off the shelf. Um, on the bug, it's a pretty solid bug. Uh, the only floor pan that needed to be replaced is the uh, driver's side right behind the uh, driver's side front seat. The passenger side is good, but again, um, since I did have to replace one, I figure I'll do both and then also get the additional ground clearance. Uh, so if you haven't done so already, please uh, like and subscribe down below. Um, and let's get started on this uh, floor pan. All right, so I started by vacuuming the floor, cleaning it out. Um, next thing I'm going to do is get rid of the uh, heater channels here. Um, I'm not going to run uh, heater channels. Uh, uh, for one, I'm not going to have you know any of that operating. Uh, number two is I've always liked uh, using these rear corners or as much of these uh, under seat compartments to store like amplifiers, any stereo equipment, or any electronics. Uh, so it just basically uh, gives you a, a little bit of extra room. So we're going to cut those out. Also, when we're putting in the floor pans, um, this way they're, they're not going to be in our way. So let's start by uh, cutting those out. So the next thing you want to do is uh, lay uh, your floor pan in the in the vehicle, see if there's any areas that need to be trimmed, and then mark your outline of where you're actually going to cut the uh, stock floor pan. The uh, replacement floor pan is going to sit uh, from the inside of the vehicle and be uh, plug welded around the uh, perimeter. So you want to have like an overhanging lip of uh, the original floor pan underneath it about like an inch all the way around. Uh, I already see right here. Um, on the uh, seat track that it needs to be uh, trimmed back. So I'm going to uh, trace around this. Uh, other than that, it looks like it fits really perfect. Um, it's 
So at that point, I'll probably go over it with maybe uh, some silver or white paint. Uh, this way it will show me uh, where I can um, trim the factory floor and then we'll go from there. Uh, let me just trim this, sit it back in one more time. Alright, so I trimmed for the seat area and then I also trimmed around the factory seat belt uh, a hole for the bolt to go through. Uh, once you have it uh, fitted to where you kind of think you want it, uh, put a couple uh, sheet metal screws through it. Alright, I got three screws in uh, to lock it in where I want it. Uh, then I'm going to go over it with some paint. And then we can pull it back out. Now you have your outline of where um, the panel fits and what you want to do is cut an inch back uh, from this all the way around because we're in a plug weld um, basically on this edge. floor pans out. Um, we could clean up this area with the grinder and then um, start uh, welding the replacement panel. In. original floor pan I grind it down the edges and then I don't know if you've seen but I went over with the hammer and dolly and uh, just these lips here uh, they actually start to curl down uh, where I cut it if I cut it an inch back from where this is so I hammered that hammered them flat so that they pucker up so that when I plug weld these uh, they won't be down away from the plug weld they'll, they'll be nice and tight to the um, uh, new floor pan that we're putting in so anything to start to curve down all the way around a hammer and dolly did. Um, then I went through, um, put holes all the way around our new floor pan to um, plug weld that. 
I will stick this in place. And we could use the uh, same screw holes that we had to uh, put it, uh, lock it in place while we're plug welding it. Alright, so now that it's all locked in place, um, I'll be using the hammer to go through and um, flatten any areas that, that are actually sitting up as I'm plug welding. Um, other than that, we're just basically going to plug weld this thing together. So let's get started. <laughs> completes it um, aside from some uh, maybe small grinding if that and then seam sealer all the way around you can tell it's nice and solid now um, fairly simple job so I'm gonna repeat the same on the other side and then I'll show you guys when I'm done all right I got both floors uh, welded in uh, that side I already primered this side um, I got it welded in uh, I grinded off any of the um, I basically plug welded all back here I grinded off any of the high spots. Um, I tack welded it uh, on the areas that don't over overlap, which is basically just from here to here and here to here. Um, on the tack welds, uh, they're not proud, so I didn't grind them down um, just to keep uh, the strength on it. Uh, I vacuumed it and then um, I went over it with Windex. Um, so I'm just going to primer this side and that should complete it. Again, just like on everything else, uh, first coat, just uh, make it kind of light. I'll let it dry about like five minutes. It's pretty warm outside today. Um, and then we'll go over it with two uh, heavy coats. All right, ready for a second coat. So that completes uh, both sides. Uh, you could jack, uh, definitely jack up the car, uh, coat the underside uh, with uh, primer, um, and then undercoat uh, some sort of rubberized or uh, petroleum undercoat. Um, 
then basically once this dries 100%, uh, you want to go over it with seam sealer around the edges and then just touch that up with a uh, primer and what other, what other, whatever uh, top coating you're going to use, uh, whether it's going to be primer paint or uh, sound deadening, um, but make sure you do go over it with some sort of seam sealer. Um, other than that, they, they look great. Um, for a lowered bug, we just uh, saved ourselves at least about an inch and a half, two inches of ground clearance. All right, so here's what the bug looks like pretty much right now. Uh, I got the uh, driver's side uh, front fender on that's been off for uh, pretty much since you guys have seen it. All the uh, thumbnails and most of the videos, front bumpers on. Uh, so it really completes the look of the bug. It's amazing what one fender and a front bumper will do. Um, so let's take a closer look at the um, floor pans. So you can see, they look really clean. Um, the stampings on them are really nice. And again, like I said, just go over the uh, edges with a uh, seam sealer and they'll look beautiful once they're all seam sealed and uh, top coated one more time. Uh, luckily, uh, the fronts were really nice on this bug, so I didn't need to do that. It was just basically the uh, from the uh, rails back. Uh, body work on the oval clip is 100% done. Uh, next video, I'm going to do uh, one last color sanding of this uh, black primer. And then we're going to shoot the uh, final color on it, which is this... Uh, uh, it's kind of like a ruby... A slash between a ruby red and a rust red primer. Um, the bug's color is a ruby red. Um, but there's also rust red primer in certain areas, so it kind of makes it difficult. I can't do straight rust red primer, so I'm going to have to have this uh, color matched uh, when I shoot this and then uh, blend it in. Uh, so you'll see me do that in the next episode. We'll just um, uh, wet sand this. I'm going to do four or five, six hundred grit uh, wet sand, then shoot it with the uh, color. And then I'll scuff, I'll scuff it in areas to give it its patina look. And then um, uh, I'll show you what uh, top coat uh, will do, whether we'll clear it or um, uh, what, uh, whatever we end up doing to kind of seal it. Uh, so that'll be the next episode on that. Uh, after that, we will put the uh, fabric rag top on and then um, send it off to get the uh, engine and trans uh, put in. I have a 1600 dual port that's already running and everything um, that I've had for a while. It's in the garage um, at my other property. So we'll get that tossed in and then this thing will be ready to hit the streets. So if you have any comments, uh, put them down below. Uh, things you'd like me uh, to see on it. We are going to do another wheel swap on it. I have some South Africans, uh, 15 four and a half fronts and 15 six rears that we're going to be putting on this. I might be doing a giveaway with these wheels and tires. Well, I'm pretty sure I am. Either these or the South Africans. And then um, after that, we're going to, I'm probably going to swap out and put either a set of 17 inch uh, Porsche Fouche or a set of 17 inch um, VW smoothies on it and those will probably be the final set of wheels that uh, stay on the bug. So again considering what we started with some roached out rotted out uh, uh, four pans uh, these are a hell of an improvement but either way if you have to replace floor pans uh, you can either go with stock or if you're going to go with the lower bug uh, it's a no-brainer to go with the uh, floor pans that we used. I'll have the link down below of where I got them from. Uh, so you could go and get them online. Uh, 
my rear trailing arms I got from the same company. Um, their products that they produce are great. Uh, their shipping is super fast. I've had no problems with them and I definitely recommend them. So that pretty much concludes this episode. If you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe down below. It really helps us out a lot. Uh, next uh, couple episodes will be on the bug. Uh, trying to wrap this up. Uh, if you've noticed, we have a new car floating around in the background. It's a VW Fastback. That will be coming out in a future episode shortly. It might be between one of the VW bug episodes. Uh, we will have Daz on the episode doing a will it uh, look good. I know you guys like those episodes, so we will have that. That will be the first uh, episode on the, um, on the VW Fastback. Again, thank you guys for tuning in, and see you on the next episode.